one of the best Madden offenses of old and something that is not meta, not bunch, is the split close. And in this year's game, EA added some new, really cool concepts to the split close formation in the Dolphins offensive playbook. Now, I already got a full ebook on the Dolphins playbook. If you guys want to check that out, that's in our school community. And it's going to be receiving some updates. So if you're not a school community member yet, really encourage you to join. It's only $10. It gets you access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all of the updates to those. Members get instant access to all of that stuff. You get everything for $10 for both Madden and for college football, $25. And so we're going to be going over some plays in this Dolphins uh, playbook really the two couple two or three main plays uh, that I like to use is I like to use these cheap motion plays and we'll be just kind of setting some audibles here but mainly it's going to be PA cheat wrap cross we'll talk a little bit about this play and uh, why it's good I also want to kind of go over a couple things about the formation you can put two running backs in the backfield so the cool part about this is we can go into all these like kind of pro personnel sets the reason that this is good is let's say you're playing a, a defense like dollar for example all right well let's just see if dollar can stop the run right so we just go down to this and you know try to hit them in the try to hit them in the in the ground game so a lot of versatility within the audible system that you could do. Um, there is ways to get tight ends back here. So you could go into two tight end sets. But in general, uh, I just think it's 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 kind of a unique formation this year. And, and there's a lot of good things you can do with this. So what you can do uh, with this with this formation is you have this cheap motion play to this wheel route. Um, you can stem this guy all the way up if you want. You'll see here that'll kind of change the depth of his route. Let's see if this is not a visual bug. There we go. Um, but basically, you'll see this guy's going to run behind the backfield, come around here, and then you can kind of throw this. Now, I want to talk about kind of building around this and why this is really good. So one of the things that's happening a lot, this is more so out of mid blitz, but it, it, it still is going to happen out of dollar as well. People are starting to utilize a shaded down man coverage approach to playing defense. And these cheap motion plays are going to make it almost impossible for you to play shaded down man coverage. So, you know, one of my favorite combos out of this would be something like this. This is going to give me a high-low read on the right side. It's going to let me attack the seams well. But watch this cheap motion. Oftentimes, this is just going to do a really good job. You see that man coverage is super behind it, and we're able to attack the shade down man coverage. So then what that's going to mean is your opponent is going to basically just start to get into – regular man coverage and what happens a lot with these cheap motion plays is a lot of times they will basically kind of bump uh, or they'll just get like a bad animation in man coverage and you see how I got to step on him and I'm able to throw this over the top of a cover one play so it's hard to play man coverage against these cheap motions and so what's going to happen is people are going to want to play cover two or cover three. So I want to first talk about cover two and why this is really good. If they're playing cover two cloud flats, and we will talk about how to deal with soft squats in just a minute. But if they're playing like a cloud flatted cover two, a lot of times this is going to just absolutely torch it. You're going to see that this cheap motion will just kind of get on top of that cloud and it'll just run by him. And this can be a really nice cover two beater. Now, one of the best counters to this is you're seeing a lot of people are utilizing soft squat zones. I think the soft squat is probably, if we talk about zone of the year, it's, it's probably the best zone in this game just because it defends stuff like this. You'll see with this specific cheat motion play, it doesn't always match him. And the reason why is because he goes far enough in the backfield for some reason. So I'll show you real quick here. You see this is a soft squat zone. And again, the route combo, we're just putting a streak here, a flat route and a streak over here. And you'll see again, if you just watch this cheap motion, watch that soft squat. He's going to start to match him, but then he just, for whatever reason, doesn't match him. Now, I'll show you that that's kind of specific to this play and also something about Dolphins in general. So what's really interesting is it's almost like a, a formation within a formation. If I audible to PHE wheel, you're going to see here that it moves the tight end sides. Not a huge deal, but it is something that we want to just kind of quickly touch on here. So if I was to do the same exact route combination, you're going to notice that this cheat motion is slightly different. The difference is he doesn't go behind the running backs. He's going to go in front of them. So when he goes in front of them, take a look here on the right side, you're going to see that this soft squat is actually going to match and run with him all the way up the field and play pretty good defense. So it's a little thing, but it can make a big difference in terms of what coverage are you actually forcing them to play consistently. And basically what we're forcing the defense into within this cheap motion series is we're forcing them into cover four 
or cover three hard flat. So I want to go over cover four and cover three hard flat here real quick. So you're going to see here, this is cover four hard flat. Watch this outside hard flat. He'll do a good job of playing him at first, but then you can kind of throw this late. And so you're seeing you're putting a lot of stress on them having to switch stick onto that player and go defend this. So because of that, and because of some of those stresses and strains that we're putting on the defense, now what you're able to do is you're able to throw this crosser in the middle of the field. It kind of opens up the middle of the field because they can't really switch stick off of the cheap motion play. The cheap motion wheel is the main thing that they have to consistently take away because if they don't take that away, we're going to hit that again and again and again. And so a simple route combo like this where we have a high-low on the right side of the screen. And then we also have something for the user. You're going to see right here this running back streak can also kind of get into a soft spot against the defense. Again, if we're just anticipating what are they going to do, more than likely it's going to be some type of hard flat coverage to defend this. And I'll talk about that um, for the cheap motion in a minute. But take a look at this running back route, kind of get on top, and then you also have that crosser laid in the play. Now, let's say that they're not putting a hard flat on that right side. So let's say this is corner, um, this nickel corner or slot DB is in a purple. That Then you can just throw this quick to the outside. You can pretty much always, you know, pretty much in general, I would recommend always kind of looking over here to the left side quick on this play and trying to uh, take advantage of this of, of this this play if they're not, if they're not um, switch sticking onto it. One little tip that I found from running this play a little bit is you want to, if you're going to throw it behind the line of scrimmage, you don't really want to freeform it. If you freeform this up, in practice mode, it, it, it seems to be throwing it okay. I've just found in games, sometimes he'll overthrow that route for some reason. I don't know if it's a Will Levis thing or if it's what it is. But what I like to do is I'll just pass lead it directly to the side, so directly left, and then I'm not really freeforming. I'm just kind of pass leading it, if you will, all right? So as you can see, kind of forcing them into a cover four hard flat with a switch stick on that left side is really what we're, what we're accomplishing. So what I like to do from that is I like to do different plays off of the same motion. So that's one example of a play. Um, another example of a play that I like to have in my arsenal is a seam streak to Tyreek Hill here. We're going to use a tight end post and then on this back side uh, a couple different things I like to just run a basic streak and then I already have kind of this this running back coming across the formation so you're going to see how this play out a little play action now and really what we're looking for is this tight end post kind of over in this little pocket of the field again what we're anticipating this is totally going to happen a ton in this cheap motion is they're going to switch stick and they're going to switch stick oftentimes onto this hard flat defender. And they're going to basically climb up and take that, take that uh, cheat wheel. So to illustrate this, um, you know, we're just going to basically, I think what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of do a little inversion here. So we're going to put this guy in a vert, vert hook. And then we're going to put this guy in man coverage on circle to kind of imitate the idea of them switch sticking. So the next thing that I like to do is to drag my tight end across the field like this and basically run the play art like this. And the reason I like I like this, if you have running back apprentice, you could put like a running back post or something like that. Um, you could also, I mean, you could do it like that as well. But in general, I just want something to attack that left side flat. And the reason why I want something to attack the left side flat is because they're switch sticking, they're going upfield. I wanna be able to attack right underneath of where the defense is gonna vacate. This is also really effective in a situation like we were talking about earlier, where if you are running, let's say you are running this against Tampa 2, right? Well, then we have this drag right here that's gonna be super effective. We'll just block the running back and then we could even just have a running back flat. But the reason this is gonna be good is because the soft squat is gonna match this guy vertically and then this tight end kind of coming underneath, the three wreck's going to play it, but most of the time they're not going to have a three wreck on the field uh, to be able to defend that. So I'll actually show that again, and I want to take the three wreck off the field so you can kind of see what's actually going to happen. Uh, in most cases, they're going to, you're going to be able to just throw this underneath drag, and then you can kind of do whatever you want with the running backs. The running backs are super versatile in this scheme. If you want to, you could run a, a combo like this right here as well. I really like... Um, using the tight end, tight end underneath. 
And again, this is a little situational, but it's hard to user this because if they user that, we can just throw the post, but this just kind of gets underneath everything. It's a super hard play to defend uh, within this. You really the, the cool part about this, this offense is really difficult to play man coverage against this scheme. Very, very difficult uh, to play man coverage against this scheme. Okay, so another thing that I like to do um, in terms of just leveraging the power of this is you have this running back kind of like little underneath route that you can run as well. So we'll block this left side running back right here. And then on this right side, we'll literally just run the play like this. The reason this is good is because you have a high-low read uh, between that. And then you have this running back kind of coming underneath as well. So if you think about kind of how, again, how they're going to switch stick onto things, oftentimes – this um, this left side guy is going to be manned up onto, uh, if you think about it, because they're going to switch ticket. They're going to switch stick to try to take this away. And then if you're just patient with this, you can just hit this running back coming underneath, and you see a nice little underneath check down within the play. Now, the other reason why I like this is because against man coverage now, we have the, the capability to hit our tight end out of the backfield. So, I mean, even just something simple like this, but take a look at this tight end, a little quick out, a little speed out cut. You can hit that, and then you have the crosser coming backside as well. But really the main thing that they're going to have to do to defend this formation is they're going to have to stop this right side cheat motion. Obviously, once they start to stop that, then what I like to do is go to some more basic route combos like this PAY cross, for example, if you just block your running back, and then what I'm going to do is corner, use that stem corner with a running back streak out of the backfield, something like this. Pretty decent little play here. And again, this is where we're just going to start to – because if you think about the offense, we're pretty much heavily, consistently, every single time kind of attacking this right side or this, uh, this left side. What I would re recommend – is every now and then kind of having something like this, right? Having something like this where you're, there is no motion. They still are going to have to respect the cheap motion within their defensive structure, and then you're going to be able to just hit some basic combos that are, are pretty much always good. Um, another underrated route combo, in my opinion, would be something like this with this, um, this streak. You know, if you wanted to do a combo like this, I think this is pretty decent. Um, the tight end corner is going to – you're going to have this running back streak kind of helping clear some space. But normally what we're going to actually hit is this backside drag. I really like to incorporate this backside drag as well because, again, what they're going to start to do on this right-hand side, just kind of like what they're going to start to do on this left-hand side, is you're going to start to see increases, increases in basically a cover two coverage. So by having a backside drag like this, this combo right here could be pretty effective because the soft squat's going to have to take this tight end, and then underneath, your drag is going to be open across the formation. And then, of course, they still have to kind of respect the the cheap motion within this, right? Uh, again, it's kind of like two formations within a formation here. Here's the cheap power O, um, a little bit of a different motion, but in, the run is actually pretty good out of this, so I like to use that. The one that we didn't talk about yet – is uh, the fullback, uh, not the not the cheap fullback, fullback play, but the uh, RPO peak cheat wrap and go. So you can kind of see they're they're like different motions uh, within this, and we'll actually see P, uh, RPO. We have PAY cross. We have halfback angle. We have just a basic quick hike, no motion run plays as well within this, but. In general, you know, kind of – you can use this as a full scheme or a mini scheme. Um, you know, you have a couple different things that you can do. I did want to show this PA cheat uh, – or I'm sorry, um, where's that? Well, don't think of this crosser, crossing play as well while we're here. So what you can do with this PA crosser play is this is going to kind of look like um, – essentially it's going to look like the, the cheat motion with the post, but now – you can actually stem this crosser up one and run the play like this. And you're going to see here that the spacing on this play is pretty decent. And look where that crosser kind of gets behind the yellows in a soft spot when you stem him up one tick. So, you know, just little things like that that are pretty, uh, pretty unique uh, to this formation. This RPO peak, it has this uh, streak to the slot receiver. You can kind of look at that. And then if you don't like that, you can just throw this out here quick. 
it's a nice way to just, again, we're just stressing them and we're putting a lot of pressure on that flat defender. And then if they do, uh, we, if they do cover that, we can just let the game kind of hand this off to the running back and just run the ball right down the middle like that. The other thing that you can do uh, within this formation, I, again, I, I want to come back to this pH sheet will post. This is a play that you can use. And, and if you ever want to take the cheat motion off of the play, feel free to do that. So, like, let's say we want to do a combo. Let's say we want to do something like this. Um, nothing wrong with this right here. We're just not going to have the cheat motion, right? And then we just have our, our basic, you know, drag, slant, post, combo type of deal that we can use. So um, as the gear goes on, we get uh, more backfield. Uh, when we get, like, backfield masters and stuff like that, I think this scheme gets a little better just because you can start using angle routes out of the backfield. But in general, um, I think this is one of the best combos in the entire game because it's, you have to do so many things to respect this cheap motion. And then that leaves things like this running back streak or the crosser wide open. You have the seam streak thread on both sides. Um, that's another reason I really like this RPO play because if they're not, um, if they're not really paying attention, you can sometimes just throw the streak. That wasn't a great look for it. Obviously, there I would want to throw the cheap motion. But I've seen, you know, that streak basically be open for a touchdown. So just kind of something that you always want to look at when running this play. I like to look at the streak, and then if that's if I see they're not biting down on that, then I'm going to be looking to throw that that uh, that wheel. And then if that's not open, I'm just going to hand the ball off. So a lot happens, but in general, um, you know, this is kind of something that I like to use. And I'm trying to think anything else uh, as far as this goes. I don't think there's a ton left other than just, again, I, I really like this play. Um, one other thing you can do is, again, if you want to use a stemmed in route instead of a post, then you get a little bit more of a delayed crossing of the field. So it just kind of space out a little bit better, you know, and then you can kind of throw in between the zones like that as well. But in general, this formation is going to force a lot of cover four and a lot of cover three. And then you want to use things like PA cross and some of those other plays to be able to manipulate that. For example, um, another thing that we can do, let's say we want to go to, let me see if I can show you, PA cheat wheel post. We can also utilize a corner route on the side. Now, this is a little bit tricky, but you can do this. You're going to need to kind of be on. I like to do it out of this play because you don't want them to be all the way back. You want them to be more up on the line of scrimmage. But this is a street corner flat combination. I will say um, they don't run as good as I would want them to, to run. So what you can also do is you could run the street corner flat like this. I was trying to show you about this before. But basically something like this right here. You know, you could you could certainly run something like this and just utilize these these corners. I like to use the corners because again, what are we for what is the coverage that we're consistently forcing them into? A shaded down cover 4, right? We're consistently forcing a shaded down cover 4. So, you know, even if you're in a even if you run a combo like this, you know, to me this is a perfectly good combo and it just forces their hand on the cover four and cover three coverages. And then if you are getting a lot of cover three, we didn't cover this. Um, let me actually go grab. You can actually do it out of this pH sheet wheel post. So if you are getting like a lot of cover three, I did want to just cover this real quick. There's still a pretty easy way to manipulate cover three in this game. So all we're trying to do is we're just trying to hold this outside third. So the, what I like to do is just a corner route to the tight end. We'll stem this a little bit. And then, you know, you could put a running back streak out here. You could put this guy on a block, whatever you want to do here. But essentially, we're just going to hold this third for just long enough. And if they're falling asleep or they're spending too much time focusing on the cheat motion, you have that cover three beater kind of coming back across the face of the outside or the middle third defender. So anyways, that is the Dolphins split close. Wanted to do a little mini scheme on here for you guys. If you guys want to check out my full Dolphins offensive ebook, that's going to be available by becoming a member of our school community. If you're not a member of the school community yet, the link to sign up is in the description down below.